Hey everyone, this is Carl with Trial Bite Studios, and today I'd like to take a look at one of the most vibrant and diverse species of arthropod to ever exist on the planet, the trilobite. In fact, these guys were so successful that paleontologists used trilobites to age other fossils found in the same rock. Ever since the founding of Trilobite Studios, I've wanted to make a video discussing these fascinating creatures for a few reasons. The first and foremost reason is because the channel is named Trilobite Studios, and our mascot is the trilobite. The second reason is because the first fossil that I ever found in my adult life was that of a Devonian age trilobite at a fossil site in West Virginia. Prior to that discovery, I had lost a lot of my youthful interest in dinosaurs and other prehistoric life to things like social media and video games. But thanks to Josh and that first trilobite fossil I found, I've now rekindled an interest in all things prehistory. Alright, now that I've gotten all that out of the way, let's take a dive into the wonderful world of trilobites. The first trilobites appeared during the Paleozoic era of geologic time, specifically the Cambrian period, which occurred from 521 million years ago to 488 million years ago. During this time, there wasn't a whole lot of excitement occurring on the surface of the Earth, but the seas were a different story. The seas were full of life, and a flurry of new species emerged. This is known as the Cambrian Explosion. The explosion refers to the rapid radiation of many new species during this time. Of course, when I say rapid, I mean millions of years. It was during the Cambrian explosion that the humble trilobite began to diversify and thrive. Now, unfortunately, there's no way I could cover every species of trilobite in one video, because there are at least 20,000 unique species that science knows of, and I'm sure there are many more that remain undiscovered. So what I'd like to do in this video is show off some of the more unique ones as we proceed through geologic time. We start our journey in the seas of the Cambrian. During the Cambrian, trilobites diversified into four unique orders of trilobite. And I'm going to butcher these names, but uh, they are Redlichida, Pytocaparita, Agnostida, and Corynexcochida, I think. Uh, somebody correct me in the comments, please. Throughout this era, trilobites thrived and diversified, but their body plans didn't become as elaborate as they would become in the future. That doesn't mean they're boring. Take, for example, the Paranopsis genus of trilobite. These little guys are unique because they appear to have almost two regions of cephalization, two head regions. But of course, they don't. The symmetrical look of these trilobites more than likely developed as an answer to predation. Take, for example, the modern-day Gila monster, a lizard native to southwestern United States and Mexico. The Gila monster has developed a short, stumpy tail compared to most other lizards. Scientists have long theorized that this adaptation is an answer to predation. The tail of the Gila monster looks enough like its head to fool predators into attacking it instead of the lizard's actual head allowing the Gila monster to escape relatively unharmed. The same principle applies here for Paranopsis. Paranopsis also didn't have eyes, and is theorized to have crawled around on the Cambrian sea floor, digging into the sediment looking for detritus and other food. Paleontologists have also theorized that Paranopsis might have lived in some of the deepest parts of the ancient Cambrian ocean, and therefore had no use for eyes, and, as a result, lost them over many years of adaptations. Trilobites had their first encounter with mass extinction during the end Cambrian mass extinction event. Despite being well adapted and diversified, many species of trilobites died out during this event, and nearly all red lichia trilobites went extinct. But fear not, this is not the end for our arthropod protagonists. Our journey now takes us into the seas of the Ordovician. The Ordovician saw the first land-based plants colonize Earth around 470 million years ago. But other than that, there still wasn't a whole lot going on up on the land. After the Incambrian mass extinction scare, trilobites came back, and arguably thrived even more than they did during the Cambrian. This gave rise to some of the most interesting body plans trilobites ever sported. Just look at specimens like the Problicas, Christae, Acnopotel, these guys. Look at these guys. They are... they are something. I mean, seriously, just look at these guys. They're all so wacky and unique. They also beg so many questions like, what were all the spikes for? Was it defensive? What was the purpose of that proboscis looking thing? We don't know exactly, and we may never know, but that's what makes trilobites so special to me. Unfortunately, once again, trilobites were not unaffected by the mass extinction which marked the end of the Ordovician. Notably, the end Ordovician mass extinction wiped out the previously successful forms Telefindae and Agnostida. We follow our little arthropod buddies into the next period of geologic time, the Silurian. The Silurian was a happening time to be alive. Oh yeah! This is happening! This was the period that witnessed the emergence of vascular plants, and more importantly, saw the first arthropods begin to colonize the land. 
During this period, trilobite species like the well-adapted Lycida and Phacopida overshadowed almost all other trilobite species. Regrettably, this brings us to the turning point in the story for our trilobuddies. From a combination of both changing sea levels and mass extinction events, trilobites began a slow, steady swim towards total extinction. This is a pattern that continued into the Devonian and the Carboniferous periods, and spelled doom for all trilobites. Trilobites practically limped into the Permian period, and now but one order of trilobite remained, the Proteida. The Proteida were theorized to be a deeper dwelling order that survived mainly on scavenging and detritus. Yet, secure in their ecological niche, the Proteida order of trilobite clung on to deer life for millions of years during the Permian, only being completely wiped out during the Permian mass extinction event, the worst extinction event to ever occur. The Permian mass extinction caused the death of nearly 95% of all aquatic species and 70% of all terrestrial species. To say that life on Earth was ravaged by the Permian mass extinction is a gross understatement. This brings us to the final note in the song of our tribal buddies. You might think it's a rather sad note to end on. Yes, trilobites did, like many other animals that once lived and thrived on the planet, go extinct. But in truth, their song is one of success. Trilobites flourished for millions of years. They were around when the first plants grew, they watched their arthropod brethren colonize the land, they bore witness to several mass extinctions, survived new predators emerging, were smaller than pennies, grew to monstrous sizes, and populated almost every part of the ancient oceans. They've also been crucial in our greater understanding of paleontology. They let us study the development of eyes, allow us to date other fossils, and give us an idea of what the ancient seas they inhabited might have looked like. But more than that, trilobites leave us fascinated. Their interesting forms leave us feeling like a little kid when we see one in a museum. They're so well preserved that it feels like one of them will just get up and crawl away. There really is something magical about pulling a piece of rock from the earth flipping it over and seeing that unmistakable body plan, and thinking to yourself about how long that little guy must have been there just for you to come along and find him. In a way, trilobites are almost relatable. Trilobites were never the top predators, nor were they the bottom of the food chain. They just lived their happy little lives, scuttling around on the seafloor, minding their own business. Much like how many people go about their daily routine. They made their mark on the world humbly, and disappeared just as humbly. Thank you all for watching, and I for one can't wait until the next time I find another trilobite.